Right, in the last session we looked at uh, the Trinity as a model for community. What I want to do now is look at the Trinity as a model for community development. When Jesus sent out his disciples to do ministry in the community, how did he send them out? Two by two. Two by two, that's right. What people often neglect is that what he asked them to do next. When he sent them out two by two, he sent them to villages and towns and he said, wherever you go, look for a third person. Right? Now we overlook the significance of the third person. How did Jesus describe the kind of third person that he asked his two disciples to connect with? He said that should, person should be a person of peace. peace. That's right. Now I think it's very interesting for a start that he doesn't actually say they've got a believer, got to be a believer like you. They've just got to be open, responsive, uh, supportive, helpful, peaceful. Right? So he sent out his disciples two by two and encouraged them wherever they went to get involved with a third person. Two plus one equals? Three. And what have we got? Trinity. Trinity. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Now, <clears throat> we have to overcome a slight cultural aversion to the number three. Because we often say, two's company, three's? That sounds pretty negative, doesn't it? Actually, in biblical terms, two's company, three's community. And I want to suggest to you that if you want to develop community in a locality, you do it in threes. And I want to suggest there are strong biblical reasons for this. If community is about relationships, once you start developing a relationship between three people, you begin the exponential development of quantities of relationship. If you have one person, you have one person and how many relationships? No relationships. If you have two people, you have two people and how many relationships? One relationship. When you have three people, you have three people and how many relationships? Thank you, three relationships. So in fact, you go from zero to one to three. Do you see that? That's the beginning of an exponential development of relationship. If community is about developing relationships, then it's at the third connection that it takes off. Right? More than that, I would like to suggest that the number three represents a really important development, not just in the quantity of relationships, but in the quality of relationships. I'd like to suggest that for three reasons that the three is a community. Okay? First of all, when you've got three persons in relationship like this, A, B and C, what a relationship with a third person does means that if the relationship between B and C breaks down, B and C have a relationship with A that holds them together, right? So what, first of all, a, a trinity does is provides security or stability uh, for community. Does that make sense? What does it say in the scriptures? A chord... Threefold cord is not easily broken, right? So that's 
highly significant. The second thing we need to realise is that <clears throat> if there is in fact a conflict between B and C, the third person cannot can play a role not only in holding them together, but in helping them resolve their conflict with each other. If there's just two people, they only experience their conflict subjectively, right? They only experience how it impacts on them. But a third person actually has the capacity to understand the conflict in modern terms, objectively, or in postmodern terms, intersubjectively. Do you understand what I'm saying? It provides a degree of insight or wisdom that the two who are experiencing the conflict from the inside cannot provide for themselves. Which is why when two people get in trouble, they often go to a third person to help them, a counsellor or a mediator or a negotiator. Right? Do you understand that? The third person is really important. Well, my, my view is the reason that so many couples are in trouble in our culture is that they don't legitimate the place of the third person, right, uh, for helping them. They think they should be able to sort it out all by themselves, right? Um, so it provides not only subjectivity, uh, but also, let's say, intersubjectivity or what many of us know as objectivity. They're not the same, but it plays a similar role. Uh, and uh, in the scripture it says, if, if there's an issue, you should always look for the role of a witness, or maybe even two or three witnesses who can play that role, providing a perspective on stuff that you're involved with. Is that clear? Um, in fact, the scripture says, you know, if you've got a conflict with somebody, take a third person with you. Isn't that clear? If they don't have another third person there, take one with you to create that in order to deal with the issue. So is that, is that clear? So it provides subjectivity for, and uh, subjectivity for community. The third uh, reason that three makes the community is this. And this is highly significant. One person can talk about love and other people can hear. Another person makes two and those two people can talk in a way that demonstrates the reality of love to other people that are observing. Right? Uh, that, so they become a couple and they talk about love in a way that people can uh, observe and understand. But three persons can actually create a psychosocial space that actually embodies love or incarnates love so that people can climb inside that space and people can actually experience the love that they are talking about. Let me show what I mean. One person can talk about love. So they can talk about the love of God. Yes, I understand what you're saying. I don't really understand it fully though. They can have another person and they can talk with that person in a loving way. And now we understand more about love by the loving way in which they talk to each other. But it's still something we experience from afar. It's not something that's existentially alive for us. But if there's a third person involved and they are talking with each other in a loving way, we can enter into that space that they create in their relationships and experience the love that they are talking about. Do you understand what I'm saying? Jesus, in fact, says where there are two or three of you together, there am I in the midst. Right? In the midst. We can incarnate the love of Christ personally in our own lives. We can advocate the love of Christ in our uh, relationships. But we actually can 